tell alt tsunami is everyone in Washington writing a political memoir? It sure seems that way. The latest ones to hit the list are John McCain's The Restless Wave, which debuts at number one, and James R. Clapper's Facts and Fears, at number three. Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, supports the contention that Russian interference affected the outcome of the election. As he said on Face the Nation recently, to me it stretches credulity to think that the Russians didn't have profound impact. Hit Parade Americans are so consumed by political books right now that some of us at the book review began to wonder about reading trends in summer's past. A quick browse in our archives revealed that 10 years ago this week, Stephanie Meyer's sci-fi novel, The Host, was in constant number one. Barbara Walters's memoir, Audition, topped the non-fiction list, but it was the book at number three, a collection from the comedian Chelsea Handler called Are You There, Vodka? It's Me. Chelsea which quickly became the season's buzziest book. Mitch Albom's Tuesdays with Maury ruled the non-fiction list 20 years ago, while Sue Grafton's N is for Noose was the country's top novel. At the bottom of the fiction list was a book people were just beginning to hear about, Helen Fielding's Bridget Jones's Diary, which would go on to dominate summer sales. Danielle Steele's Oil was the number one novel 30 years ago, but it was Gabriel Garcia Marquez's Love in the Time of Cholera, at number three, that ultimately became the summer's must-read. For the record, a memoir by Ronald Reagan's one-time chief of staff, Donald T. Regan, was number one on the non-fiction list, soon to be overtaken by number two, Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. Forty years ago, Irma Bombeck's If Life is a Bowl of Cherries, What Am I Doing in the Pits? was number one on the non-fiction list. Sidney Sheldon's Bloodline and Judith Krantz's Scruples battled it out for the top fiction spot, but it was the book at number eight, John Irving's The World According to Garp, that drove the summer's cultural conversation. A self-help book topped the non-fiction list half a century ago, Dr. Heimgenot's Between Parent and Child, which instructed moms and dads how to communicate in children's. Arthur Haley's novel Airport was the country's best-selling novel. The Times, however, was not a fan, sniping in a review, can shopping center, parking lot and city dump be far behind?